Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Thursday, September 8th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Now, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Of course, I'm always running my $15 MLB best bet, so check it out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Thursday, September 8th. First up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Josiah Gray and Adam Wainwright are the projected starters. Josiah Gray likes pitching away from home, and he also likes pitching in day games. As his home and road splits, he's got a 6.51 ERA at home starts and a 3.64 ERA in road starts. And then his night outings, a 5.92 ERA. His day games, a 3.02 ERA. So he's on the road, and he's in a day game here. Against a pretty tough lineup in the St. Louis Cardinals, but I do think Josiah Gray will have a solid outing here. And I don't really love the price that we're seeing with St. Louis, even though I do think the Cardinals win this game in the end. I don't want to lay minus 300 on the money line. I don't want to lay negative odds with the run line. So I'm just going to take the under in this one. Adam Wainwright pitching really well at Bush Stadium overall this season. A 2.41 ERA at home. I think he's good enough a pretty against a pretty weak Nationals lineup. So give me the under in this Nationals-Cardinals game. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Chicago Cubs. Luis Sessa and Adrian Sampson are the starters. And Adrian Sampson, an ERA at 4.5 at Wrigley Field this year, so he's definitely been a lot better on the road than at home. But he is facing a Reds team that's going with a bullpen game here. I don't really trust it. Luis Sessa as the opener. The Cubs hit right-handed, pitching pretty well in the last 30 days. Not really against lefties, but against righties, solid numbers overall. And Luis Sessa, an ERA above five on the season. He hasn't been the sharpest in the opener slash starter role. And I do think that the Cubs will get to him here. So I'm going to take the Chicago Cubs in a lean. Not my favorite game on the board on the money line. Next up, we see a San Francisco Giants-Milwaukee Brewers doubleheader. No official plays for this doubleheader for me, but it looks like Jacob Junis, Corbin Burns should be going in game one. Freddie Peralta game two for the Brewers. This could certainly change. And I do think Corbin Burns has a bounce back outing here. He's facing a Giants lineup that's ranked inside the top 10 highest strikeout rate against righties in the last month. Team OPS ranked outside the top 15. So the Giants really haven't hit righties uh, very well in the last 30 days. I think they struggled against Burns and I could see them struggling against Peralta as well. A similar starter is a power pitcher. Earns a lot of strikeouts. Sometimes his control is an issue, but I do think both these starters will have success on uh, Thursday afternoon and Thursday night. So I'm going to lean towards the Brewers uh, if when Burns is on the mound, but like I said, no official plays for me. In our next game, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Kyle Gibson and Sandy Alcantara are the starters. Now, Kyle Gibson, if I'm going to back him in a game, I'm looking to take him at Citizens Bank Park. We're on the road. He's got a 5.74 ERA, but at home, dependable 3.71 3 ERA with a winning 7-3 record. Opponents batting average of 239. And against the Marlins this season, Gibson's had a lot of success in about 24 innings pitched, so he's faced them quite a bit, the most he's faced any team this year, a 2.92 ERA. We know the Marlins offensively have not been great in the last two months or so, and against righties in the last 30 days, they're ranked 29th in Team OPS, so I don't really trust their offense to do much here. On the other side, Sandy Alcantara has also faced the Phillies quite a bit, a 29 and two-thirds innings, so he's, that's also the most that he's faced any team this year, and a nice ERA at 3.03. His numbers are better at Lone Depot Park, but on the road, still a 3.3 ERA, not too bad. I think he's good enough here to keep this game low scoring, so I'm going to lean towards the under in this Marlins-Phillies game. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the New York Yankees. Sonny Gray going for the Twins. No official starter for the Yankees quite yet. You know, I do worry about Sonny Gray in this particular outing. I watched him in his last start against the Chicago White Sox. He was pulled pretty early. He only had 59 pitches through four innings of work. And in that fourth inning against the White Sox, he seemed to lose his control a little bit. He was giving up a good amount of base hits, and that's where he gave up his two earned runs. So uh, going into this start now at Yankee Stadium against a, a frustrated Yankees lineup that's not really hitting much against righties, I still think with guys like Aaron Judge in the lineup, you don't want to have a pitcher that's losing his control, keeping the pitches over the plate. And he only had two strikeouts in that game and four innings of work against the uh, White Sox. His ground ball percentage wasn't the best in that one either. So I do think in another road start here where Gray has struggled more so on the road than at home, I don't love his chances. I'm going to take the New York Yankees on the money line. We'll have to see where the price is going to be and who the Yankees are starting, but that's where I'm leaning right now. And in our final game of the night, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Oakland Athletics. J.P. Sears and Dylan Cease are the projected starters. 
You know, the White Sox are starting to hit lefties very well, and they're facing a lefty in J.P. Sears that has had success at the major league level, but there is some regression to worry about in his game when you look at his XFIP and his expected ERA. I don't think that that 2.37 ERA will hold much longer. And against the White Sox team that, A, needs to win ball games really badly, and B, like I mentioned, has also hit lefties very, very well. I don't love this spot for J.P. Sears. The White Sox ranked sixth in the league in Team OPS and eighth in isolated power against lefties in the last month. And you got Dylan Cease on the mound. He's been one of the better pitchers in the American League, a Cy Young candidate so far this year. His last start against the Minnesota Twins, he almost threw a no-hitter. It was a two-out single from Luisa Rise to break up that no-hitter. Nine innings, seven strikeouts, no earned runs, and a 13-0 White Sox win. I like Cease and the White Sox here. I'm willing to lay the run line with Chicago to end the night. And that's it. Those are the games for Thursday, September 8th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.